So we should be good. A couple minutes we'll be in and out. Try to get a 360 in here too. Another episode of the Investment Properties Sales Show thing is selling at or above list. We are going to provide you guys with complete transparency and education. We take you to the video tour. Won't wise to you, giving it to you straight. There are two, two kinds of people that buy houses, okay? The first kind of people, they're people that live there, people that want to live in these houses, right? Check out this house, right? You see all these folks in the front yard. This is a family having a little family get together, right? People looking at houses for a place to live. And then the second kind of people that buy houses are people like you, people who are buying these as monetary investments, right? And this is what's so cool about this house, right? The address, 250 Fifth Street, Elyria, 44035. Now, you'll see that I've priced it at 64900 And this, folks, is a $1,000 a month rental property, man. If you've been paying attention to the Cleveland market in 2021, you know you can't get a friggin' thousand dollar a month rental property for no 65k. It just doesn't happen, right? Makes no goddamn sense, right? Market's flying, but it all comes back to the fact that there's only two kinds of people that could buy houses: people that want to live there, people like you, people who are investors, right? This particular house has tenants in there, okay? So that's gonna cut off all the people that want to live in houses like this, right? You're trying to buy a house for your wife and your kids and yourself. Well, guess what? This ain't it because there's already a family living there, right? We got a tenant in there. Half the buyer base is going to be turned off of this home, right? So then that leaves the rest of you, my investors, my cash flow investors, my folks looking to earn a return on their money, looking for a monetary vehicle, right? Well, you guys, a lot of you guys will look over properties like this because you see the, the current rent, right? The current landlord, just a mom and pop dude, right? Not a professional landlord uh, by trade or anything, right? Just a, a regular Joe who happened to have a rental property, you know, as a side gig, right? Guy works a regular nine to five, right? Rent it for only six fifty, okay? If it's just your side gig, you can do things like that, right? That rent being close to half of what the market rent for a property like this is, that turns off a lot of investors, right? A lot of investors are going to look at that and think, oh, man, this 65 k it's only a $650 a month rental. Eh, I'm not really interested, right? They might not realize because they don't know the neighborhood, they don't know the game that well, that this is a diamond in the rough. This is actually a freaking thousand dollar a month rental which which is why i kept the price super low and if you're a savvy investor you gotta gobble this some bitch up right 65k for a thousand dollar a month rental right and it's in Illyria. i like Illyria quite a bit the reason i like Illyria so much <clears throat> is it's like a nice stable neighborhood where the price the prices of the properties are usually fairly low never this low right they're low enough, like they're as low as like a lot of similar C-grade neighborhoods like, you know, the west side of Cleveland, right? But they're very stable. So you have your pick, right? You can easily rent this to cash-paying tenants who are fairly consistent and easily manageable, or you can go the Section 8 route, you know, either one, right? So for the long haul, you're looking at a $1,000 a month rental with your choice, right? You get into some neighborhoods, I'm like, dude. You got to do Section 8 or you're going to get your ass beat, right? You're going to be evicted tenants left and right, right? Not, not Illyria. No, Illyria is pretty nice, pretty stable. I like our portfolio in Illyria, right? So with this particular property, you get the opportunity to get in at a huge discount because a lot of people are passing it up because, A, they can't live there, and, B, if they're cash flow investors, they're thinking there's really not going to be uh, the ability to generate that much in rent. And what you want to do, right, what the smart investor does, you don't want to immediately take the property over and then go up to these tenants and be like, hey, dog, you're out, unless you could pay 1000 a month. That'd be fucking dumb. Don't do that, right? And it's not because, uh, you know, uh, I'm thinking you need to run a charity or anything of that nature. It, it, it works for your bottom line, right? It, it works for your bottom line to try to keep them in there, right? What I like to do, what I find, especially going from a pure mom-and-pop operation like this guy, you know, it's super unofficial, and then you go to a big company like Holton Wise, as soon as we take it over, that puts the tenants, like, you know, at a heightened risk of, of nervousness, right? That makes people want to move out because they think things are changing. And then on top of that, you hit them with a big rental raise. 
it's usually going to create an artificial turnover. You don't want to create an artificial turnover in this business, folks. That's not how we make money. We don't make money by getting an extra 50 or 100 bucks per unit. We make money by avoiding unnecessary turnover renovations. So what I like to do on the takeover, I like to get the tenants on our leases at their existing rent, right? What that does is that solidifies your position as the landlord if they don't pay rent, right? The worst thing you want to do is go to housing court on the first month you took over a property when the tenant doesn't have a lease with you and you've never collected rent from them, at the very least, they always talk to the judge and convince the judge to go ahead and extend it because they didn't know who to pay rent to, right? Now, does that ever work to where they don't get evicted? No, we still evict those motherfuckers, but it takes your $750 eviction and turns it into like a two or $3,000 eviction because we got to keep going back to court, keep reserving notices, and you're missing another month of rent. It's a whole mess, right? What you want to do is make sure any time you go to court, you got the tenants on your lease. And you can get them to voluntarily sign on your lease easily if, if you don't increase their rent, right? Then run the property for a year. They see everything's kosher. Everything's cool. Then on the next year, boom, hit them with a $50 or $100 raise. And then so on and so forth the following year, right? Slowly work them up as close to that market rent as you can, right? Never create an additional turnover because you're going to have your fair share of turnovers in this business. You're going to be spending your fair share of money on turnover renovations. Never, ever under any circumstances do you want to force the issue because it's going to lead you to having a lower ROI every time. You might be wondering why I'm walking around in a bikini. Because this is America, that's why. Land of the free, home of the brave, the land of opportunity. Like the opportunity to click the link below and sell your property on Holden Wise TV. So if all that makes sense to you folks, and this is an investment you want to take down, just hit my team up, sales at holtonwise.com. You could pay cash or you could finance. Have your proof of funds or your pre-approval letters ready. If you do not have a lender, cool, man. All good. Ask my team. We will get you a lender. Then you could submit that offer. But remember, man, I told you it's hard to find stuff under 100 k right now. I got this thing priced at 65 k a lot of people watch this show. A lot of people are going to be interested in this. So multiple offers are anticipated, right? So if you want to shoot a lowball offer, you're probably just wasting everybody's time. So I would come equipped, ready to make your highest and best offer. Cash is great. We love cash. But hey, man, you don't have to pay cash, right? This property will have no problem appraising, no major issues with the property. So no reason why you can't stretch your funds, man. You put down 25%. Let's have the lender put down the other 75%. That, in addition to a home inspection, really solidifies your position as an investor, right? Reduces your risk. Make sure you're not overpaying for the property, especially if you're someone who's new to the Cleveland market. And then after the sale closes, after the dust settles, my team will pick up all that management. More info on our management services, prices, policies, procedures can be found on our fact uh, uh, can be <laughs> can't talk can be found on our property management fact on holtonwise.com that is all i got for you guys today make sure you subscribe to holton wise tv if this is the first time you've been here thanks for watching subscribe to holton wise tv for more financial information education and entertainment